In the last video, we were taking a look at the Nobel Peace Prize winners from the year 2000 to 2019. Here I have listed out those 20 different ages uh, of the prize winners in order from youngest to oldest. For our references, we're going through things today. Um, we calculated the mean to be 55.75 years old and the median to be 61.5 years old. This is really great information. It gives us an idea of a typical age where someone wins the Nobel Peace Prize, somewhere in their late 50s, early 60s. The fact that the mean is less than the median gave us that idea of skew. And in this case, we had what was called the left-hand skew because the mean was less than the median. In this case, that meant that we had some smaller values that were farther away that were kind of pulling our data um, more towards uh, we had some much younger people to kind of balance out a, a group of the older people on the upper end, which is in also interesting information and pieces there. But the question is, how spread out is this data? For example, a mean where everybody was 55 or 56 years old would give us an average value here close to this. But here we have a really widespread out set of data points uh, that we can pull from. So what types of different ways can we very simply summarize what's going on here? And the idea is if we know a central value, we can talk about the spread of the value, the spread of the data sets. We'll have a pretty good idea of the data sets without having to look at every single number um, as part of that. So in this video, let's talk a little bit about some different measures of spread. Another term that we use for spread is also the range. Mathematically, we can actually get a range from our data set by just taking the biggest number or the maximum value and subtracting the smallest value or the minimum value. With our data set here, the maximum value is the oldest person winning the prize, which was 78 years old. The minimum value was the youngest person winning the prize, which was 17 years old. And if we subtract those, we get a range of 61 years. That means that all of our data was spread out over the course of 61 years, which is a pretty big spread when we're talking about, um, about these prize winners. So the range is just the maximum value minus the minimum value. However, this could be one really young person here like this, and then other people were kind of a little bit more grouped together. So we have some other pieces of, or other ways to describe the spread that um, are a little bit more meaningful and get more at the, at the uh, usefulness of the data itself. One type of uh, spread that we talk about is called the standard deviation. The standard deviation is related to the mean, um, and it's gotten by finding the difference between each data point and the mean and then squaring them and finding the average of those more or less. That's the basic mathematical principle behind that. Um, so you would take 17 minus 55.75 and square it, 25 minus 55.75 and square it, 32 minus 50, or 55.75 and square it. Add all of those up, find the average uh, basically ba uh, based on that. And that's going to give us our standard deviation. In this case, if we were to do that for our current data set, we would end up with 16.79, let's call it 16.8 years. What this tells us is if we have our mean in the middle, if we add 16.8 years on one side and subtract 16.8 years on the other side, most of the data would lie in between those values.
So it's about 60% plus. And you, this is just kind of a rough general overview of statistics. There's a lot uh, more depth and ways that you can calculate these and and, uh, and interpret them if you were to take a, a statistics class. But here we're just kind of looking for this uh, general um, general result here. So let's take a look at what this would mean. Uh, on, the young, on the younger side, if we're looking at this spread of data, our mean was 55.75 years old. If we subtract 16.8 years old, we would get a lower end of kind of this inside grouping in terms of what we what we're looking for here. So if we take 55.75 and subtract that answer, ah, sorry, minus 16.8, you get 38.95. On the upper end, we can take the 55.75 and add the 16.8, which gives us 72.55 on the upper end. So we can use the standard deviation and the mean together to give us a rough spread of the data that includes most of the data points. So here, between 38.95 and 72.55, notice that we have three on the low end and three on the high end that are outside of that grouping, but everybody else is inside there. So it gives us a good idea of that, that uh, the majority of those values of the data set. It gives us kind of that central key and, and a, a range of spaces in between there where the majority of the data could be found. Now we could get some that are much lower, we could get some that are much higher, outside of those, uh, once we kind of get outside of some of these um, values, we end up starting to look at things that we call outliers that maybe are a little bit different than most of those uh, results that we end up getting. So this is the standard deviation, a rough overview of what it means and how it's calculated and how we can use that to get a collection, a lower and a higher end where most of the data is going to lie between. Uh, standard deviation, pain to calculate by hand, um, and we'll be talking about how to find that number using uh, technology in one of the later videos here. Okay, so standard deviation is one other way that we can talk about the spread of our data set. Um, another method that we can use to talk about is something called the interquartile range. Sometimes we'll call this the IQR. What the interquartile range is, is it's a way to look at the middle 50% of the data. How we get the interquartile range goes back to kind of thinking about our median. When we talked about the median, the median was the value where there were going to be 50% of the data points above, at or above that value, and 50% of the data points at or below that value. So up here, our median fell in between 60 and 63 because there were 10 data points above that value and 10 data points below that value. And we just find the average of that. So in this case, our median was uh, that 61.5 years old. Now, if we wanna know what the middle 50% of that data is, what we wanna do, so the, the, the uh, inside 50%, I guess, gives us a good idea of, again, kind of that, that uh, central value that kind of gives it, giving us a bubble. So we're looking for that inside 50%. And the way that we find that is we're going to take what we call the third quartile and subtract the first quartile. Let's think about what quartile means. You've got that term quart in, quarter in there. And what that's talking about is it's dividing our data points into fourths, not number wise, but quantity wise. So if I have my median here, 
50% of the numbers lie above this number, 50% lie at or below that number. And then what I can do is essentially I'm finding the median of the lower half, that gives me my quartile one. And then I'm gonna find the median of my upper half and that gives me my quartile three. Um, again, calculators and technology is gonna allow us to find these values very, very quickly. We'll talk about that in a later date, in a later video. If we come back up here to our sets, notice that if we divide this lower half of our data in half, uh, we get at uh, halfway in between 43 and 48 is gonna be 45.5, is that right? So in this case, our lower data, our quartile one here is going to be at 55.5 or 45.5 rather, excuse me. And our upper quartile is going to lie in here halfway between 65 and 66 is 66.5. So again, we will be, um, so quartile three, we figured out it would be about 66.5, quartile one about 45.5. and because that's this and these are each broken down to be 25% of the data. The middle 50% or that inside 50% can be found by just subtracting these values. And in this case, our interquartile range is uh, 21 here. So we have within, uh, there's a, a 21 year bubble around the median. And within that 21 years, we have that um, middle 50% of the data. So it gives us an idea of how spread out our values are um, within how the quantity of data is distributed. So the, the mean deals with every single data point and gives us an exact value. That way, um, the mean and the standard deviation are very subject to what we call outliers, where they'll be very affected if you have one really big or one really small number. The interquartile range and the median um, are related, and those give us values that really aren't affected by the outside values. If we have a couple that are really high or really low, they're not going to affect our overall results. So they're both very useful, different ways that we can talk about that range or spread of our, of our data points.